Hello there and thank you so much for keeping us company. This is why in the morning we are talking about governance and devolution. My guests this morning are Philip Nzangi, the M M MCA, Makina Ward, Embu County, and Justice Minor Governance and Policy Analyst. We are looking into how devolution has been working for the last decade. You remember 2010, uh, the promulgation of the constitution that we're using today, we, we came up with a devolved system and a number of commissions. But now we focus on the devolution. We want to see how it has been. The, actually, the brief rundown of the things we'll be looking into is the county allocation funds and how they have been used and the impact they have been, uh, they have been there. We want to look into even the leadership, the governance, how the system has been working. And is it a good thing moving on forward? It's now 10 years. Actually, we are, we are six, six months short of the anniversary of the 2010 Constitution. Welcome to the program. Send in all your comments or questions to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. My handle is at Morani Hillary. A very good Monday morning to you. My name is Dereva Hillary. Welcome to the program. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. It's good to have you here. And uh, before even we get to the issue, we are celebrating the life of our late President Daniel Moy. And very fast, I want to get your comments and your opinions. I'll begin with you, Nzangi. What, do you, uh, what will you remember the President with? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Honorable Nzangi Philip, uh, MC for Makima Ward. And allow me to first say uh, good morning to my constituents and the Embu people. Uh, uh, president, the retired President Daniel Arap Moy is actually somebody that has got a history to, to, to tell. But uh, uh, to, to go straight to your question, I remember him for three things. One, his philosophy, his near philosophy of peace, love, and unity. Right. I also remember him for his love for the environment. Remember his uh, slogan of Katamoja Pandambili. Mm -hmm. And I will also remember him for being firm in his governance. Okay. Very firm that he, uh, even his ministers and everybody else would know. If you mess yourself every other time, the president can act any time. Okay. I think those are the three things that I really remember him for. Mm, awesome. You mentioned of governance, something that you'll be talking about here this morning. How yes. about you, Mr. Um, I'm I'm Justice Minor. Um, I come from Bomet County. And uh, I want to join the rest of Kenyans in mourning the great man that was Daniel Durati Ramoy. We It is not just also mourning, it is also celebration of life. Because um, having lived for more than uh, 95 years, so to speak. Uh, uh, though we, uh, we feel the great loss, but at the same time, we want to celebrate his life, we want to celebrate his leadership, we <coughs> want to also thank the entire family of Moy, family for having allowed uh, uh, the, the great uh, Mze Moy to offer his unique service as a president, as a, a vice president, mm -hmm. for more than 50 years. So we want to uh, say Moy was a great man. He, he, he lived in and led in difficult times. Sure. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you have read and, 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 and uh, maybe watched a lot on how uh, the difficult journey as a vice president and. Uh, and, and the perseverance, and ultimately uh, coming through as a president, for me, it's a lesson for all of us, uh, the young people of this country. Otherwise, I also want to, like my colleague said, uh, for, to thank him a lot for fostering, especially the, the, the girl child education. Um, I think he came in when the issue of uh, the girl child was at the, at the bottom of priorities as a country. But I think he, he lifted the, the, the need to ensure that we Kenyans begin to invest in our um, uh, girls. Mm -hmm. And I think today we can uh, credit him for a lot of uh, schools that are like Moy girls, Moy Shongroi in Bomet, for example. I'm sure even in his county, I'm sure there is a Moy Moy girl something. So Actually, I trained in Moy High School Bureau, which was a mixed school then. Yes, so, very <laughs> so we want to thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> now, um, 10 years down the line, since the promulgation of the new constitution, we came with the devolved system, where we have now 47 counties, 
and looking into the 47 counties that we've had for those uh, for that particular period of time a lot has has been happening and i want to begin first in the health sector it has been a divorced system and uh, over time we've seen our doctors going on strike we've seen nurses going on strike because of delayed payments from where you seated uh, just as can, would you say devolution has worked for us well, you know, you know, devolution is still uh, the new kid in the block. We, we came from uh, uh, a, 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 a unipolar, you know, center of power, to what we would call multipolar center of powers. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that we had the, 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 the center of power in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and uh, as, as a result of the new constitution, of course, we devolved uh, power and resources to the 47 counties. But we must also accept that uh, it is work in progress. Where uh, power, uh, power goes, of course, governance must follow. Okay. It's been a challenge, of course, setting the necessary inf uh, governance infrastructure to be able to accommodate the, the, the new system. And, and, and of course, the challenges that bedeviled the national, uh, the, the, the center of power seem to have, you know, in a manner, Followed the the the, 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 the seem to, we, we we are envisaging the same challenges in the county government. The uh, health sector is a critical uh, uh, component of devolution. It is um, it is it, it is actually at the fulcrum of success or failure of devolution as a system. Um, but what I must confess and say. The, the, devol the devolving of, 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 of health sector was both good and bad. Good in the sense that um, the decision making on how the, the matters, health, health issues are around was devolved. The tragedy of devolution is the, once the devolution, once the, 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 gov the governance resources was devolved to the counties, there is something that people may not have known. They, then they began the centralization. Mm -hmm. So that the decision that used to be made at, 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 at the sub-county level seemed to have been moved upwards at the dining table of the big men of the counties. Mm -hmm. So that today, a decision that would have been made comfortably and easily at, 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 the, at, the, at the district hospital or the county revival hospital, the, the decision making has been centralized at the dining table of the big men, the governor maybe, and, and the others. Okay. So to me the challenge is both that once we decentralize power to the counties, what the counties did was some of them decided to centralize. So the, 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 critical, the critical question that must be discussed and we must find solution is the centralization of power within the county systems itself. So the, 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 the tragedy of, 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 of devolution, as I said, is the decentralization from Nairobi to the countries, okay. and then at the countries, what they did was the conference, the paradox, is they centralized okay. the decision making and placed it at the, at, at the, at the dining table, for lack of a better word, okay. of, of, of the big men of the countries. So to me, it is good in terms of it was wise to the, 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 the decentralize. The, the other challenge, of course, is that I do not believe that sufficient resources was allocated or followed. Of course, you, you know, when you devolve responsibilities, equally you must devolve uh, resources to follow the responsibilities. Of course, In yeah. my opinion, yeah. I do not believe that there were sufficient resources that was devolved to be able to accommodate the gigantic responsibilities that the health sector uh, and the people manning, mm -hmm. the, the, the men and women manning the health, center, uh, the health sector that we 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 given them the sufficient resources so to me i would um, the, 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 the bbi is proposing a, a health commission something to be able to to, to 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 provide at least a unified you know function. so uh, of, uh, over time you kind of feel the uh, the devolution hasn't been that good but it is in progress it is work in progress 
And, and I said the, the irony of this decentralization of, of, of decision making within the county government. All right. I do not know what my friend has, but I think in most of the counties I've gone, mm -hmm. I've seen the tragedy of centralizations of decision making. Now, let me, I know that even in some hospitals, for, 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 for the hospital to be able to, to buy basic equipment, and, and, and they need to refer to uh, some big men in the county called the CEOs or the CEC to be able to be given uh, the, 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 the go ahead to be able to procure very small items that before mm -hmm. uh, before the the, the, the devolution the, the uh, an hospital will be able to make decision right at the hospital but right. now because of devolution mm -hmm. that decision making has been centralized not devolved centralized okay Le let me hear your your uh, views in regards to how devolution has worked and actually there's something he has pointed out as a mem uh, as a, an mca i'm sure you sit in these panels and you can listen in when a proposal has been brought to the house how do you go through it and what are some of the challenges that uh, would go through to make sure maybe a certain proposal has passed in terms of maybe paying the doctors and the nurses uh, thank you um i will start with saying that uh yes devolution was the best thing that happened to this country and yes devolution is working uh, but again like he said in my own uh, local dialect we say that uh, everything would bear the image of the owner uh, by this I mean, if you really want to look at devolution and its success, again, look at the CEO of the county. Uh, because again, uh, what we have in Kenya is that um, through the spirit of devolving uh, power and resources was extremely good. And for sure, we can see results, tangible results today. Things that used to happen in Nairobi are happening in Embu town, are happening in Embu county. Things that used to happen in Nairobi are happening in Mombasa. Things that used to happen, you know, decisions are being made closer to, 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 to Mananchi. But then uh, th th there comes another challenge. That what is the character of the person that is heading the county? What is the character of the governor himself? Let me just be clear. What is the character of the governor himself? Because, again, the person sitting at the, at the helm of the county will influence decisions. Sure. I want to agree with my brother here that uh, when we decentralized power and resources mm -hmm. to the counties, again, uh, that other problem of now further decentralization mm -hmm. to the smallest units is still a, a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, because there are some people who do not still feel like if they release power again downwards. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, Hillary, it's good to be clear that uh, when we changed the constitution, when we brought in mm -hmm. a devolution, we did not change the people in Kenya. Exactly. So we did not import any other person from outside Kenya mm -hmm. to bring to this country. So still, the job that we have to work on uh, currently is the attitude, mm -hmm. the culture that we've had there before. If we are able to address that one, that now I am a servant, I do not look at how much am I able to get from this, how much power. There are some people who, when given, you'll be a CEC or a chief officer in some position, and you feel like now, for you to have that power and for you to be felt, then everything has to be where you are. Okay. I think that is where the challenge is. And if we're able to address that one, things will be okay. In terms of the health sector that you're talking about, yes, uh, it was a good thing, uh, partially, uh, in terms of uh, devolving the health sector. Right. Because again, the, uh, like us, the members of county assembly, uh, or uh, uh, we, we are able now to get involved. You know, we have the people at the grassroots. Okay. We're able to get involved in trying to influence the decisions that are made in terms of addressing mm -hmm. the needs of our people. But now the challenge comes in. You come, with, uh, you come up with these ideas. The challenge again of a failure to decentralize further the mm -hmm. services to the uh, common man closer to the man inch comes in which again is, is a decision that takes a, a lot of uh, discussion between the county assemblies and the county executive. What are the priorities of the governor? What are the priorities of the county assembly? The priorities of the county assembly will be to make laws that will help the governor do his work okay. in the best way possible. Yeah. So I, I still feel, uh, yes, he talked of a proposal to have a health commission or something else, but if we do not address the culture that has bedeviled our country mm -hmm. in Kenya today. Mm -hmm. We still have commissions that are managing other, other programs. Okay. Uh, but do we see these commissions 
are we only addressing the salary issue uh, for the doctors and the nurses, or are we only, are we also addressing the whole service across board? All right. I think the best thing, Hillary, would be to look at it at what are the challenges that are affecting all service across the health sector, not only the salaries. Okay. The salaries and whatever, you know, uh, again, uh, there has been a problem in terms of releasing funds from the national government to the, to the, uh, to the counties and everything else. Like uh, as we talk today, mm -hmm. many of the counties have not paid their salaries to or their staff okay. because maybe money has not been released from the national mm -hmm. or treasury. All right. Now, uh, speaking of governance, uh, just as, uh, would, you, would, you, would you say the, the policies and the ideas and the proposals the governors have, will have in their counties should be informed on the need of the people or, and not them what they want? Because I, I kind of feel the things that the governors would want to do are not the same that the public would want in terms of priorities. Well, but, but, but let, let, let's also, in terms of, the devolution also came with one big problem, the big man syndrome. That, that must be said. You see, that even, even the first titles the governors chose, mm -hmm. you can, the, the titles of nobility is excellent. It is, <laughs> it is meant to massage someone's ego that you're an excellent. Mm -hmm. the, the titles, I was a CEC. Uh, and I was, of course, handed over an honorable title. Honorable. I'm sure he's an MCA. Mm -hmm. If you were to address an MCA, an MCA in a village, mm -hmm. and you forgot, you, <laughs> God forbid, you forget the title honorable. Mm -hmm. You can as well, uh, you know. <laughs> so, so the title of nobility is, is a tragedy to believe in this country. That everyone else, once you join the public system, you want, you know, from the MCA to the president. They even wants, needed a flag. Yes, and a flag. And of course, are riders. <laughs> that big man syndrome that people hated the center, that one man was enjoying that. But what, what we did was to, to decentralize again mm -hmm. the, the, the tragedy, the, 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 the big man syndrome. Mm -hmm. So at the county level, if, if a governor is not the resistant to the urge to, 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 to behave like the big man or the big woman of the county, that becomes a big, a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And I want to, there are very few governors who have been able to resist the urge to, to behave like they are the demigods of their counties. Mm -hmm. the, 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 usually, once you, you are installed as a governor, of course, you, you then to get what the court pipes and the hangers on, who then begin to massage your ego, and uh, and you begin to as you uh, said, I did want to say mm -hmm. that you begin to centralize the power, mm -hmm. so that even the governance structure, mm -hmm. the, 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 the 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 governance structure in terms of whether it's vertical or both vertical and 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 um, and. And horizontal because governance, for example, a department of uh, health sector, there is administration, for example, there is uh, roads, for example. Ideally, it, in the county government, it is structured in a vertical manner, which is uh, counterproductive because the, the, the structuring of, of, of governance must reflect the, the need for interdependence, the correlation, collaborative nature of governance, so that the, the man sitting at the helm of health must begin to talk to the man who is in charge of roads because before you get to the health sector, you need the road network. Mm -hmm. uh, if the man sitting at the helm of the agriculture sector must be begin to be in, 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 in work collaboratively and, and closely with the man sitting at the helm of the um, uh, roads because then before the, the farmer that we, we, we at the, the, the county must begin to offer service, of course you must think a road either to get goods to, from, from the farm or then get services to the farm. So the, 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 the one biggest problem that I think the evolution is suffering is that we are yet to really concretize the governance structure. Okay. The governance structure is, as I said, the dining table of the governor. Uh -huh. That the governance structure is almost the governor himself. Uh -huh. When you talk about the governance structure in most counties, you are talking about the governor. Um, and, and of course, in terms of decision making, like um, uh, procurement, in most of the counties, the mm -hmm. governors have become the chief procurement officers. That the people in charge of procurement are merely doing the paperwork. Mm -hmm. The instruction comes from the court points, the hangers on, the friends, and the relatives of the governor. Mm -hmm. So that the people sit who are meant to offer the service and begin to 
to engage in the, in the, 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 the procurement process, get instruction either from the governor himself, uh -huh. or from a friend of the governor, okay. or from the peer of the governor, or from the chief staff of the governor. And of course, the, the, the other challenge that is bedeviling the county is that people who have never worked anywhere in, in this world, suddenly uh -huh. are very big men who have unlimited access to the governor. Uh -huh. So that the decision, you can begin to see the symptoms of those people around the governor in the decision okay. that the governor makes. In the instructions that the governor makes, you can begin to see the, the footprints of his friends. You can begin to see, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I know we talk about corruption in, in the counties as vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the governor's structure. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you know, the people are meant, the CEOs who in most counties who are meant to, you know, run the, 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 the procurement process. If I'm sure, I don't know, I, I know of a number of friends from a number of counties who have testified that they stopped be the people in charge of departments, but they make reference almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I even know of a, of a governor today okay. who is who every procure every item you need to procure, he needs to make a note. Not because he wants to render service, but because he wants to monopolize the tendering process and ensure that mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he is the net beneficiary of the tendering. I don't want to say proceeds, but of course now there is the monster of uh, kickbacks. Mm -hmm. And some governors have even gone ahead to institutionalize kickbacks so that every CEO must, when procuring, must have in mind the governor will receive a call in the evening All to right. check on whether the, 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 the client behaved in a manner okay. and, 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 and is sufficiently rendered the service, not in terms of uh, that the road network is okay, or, but the D deliver that which All right, I no. need to, to, to. So, so to me, mm -hmm. the governance structure has become the governor. Okay. The governance structure has, and, and therefore even in the new, in the new, you know, in the new, you know, it is all to then begin to uh, look at the constitution. Mm -hmm. What we need to look at before even we talk about uh, increasing the, the resources to the counties. Mm -hmm. We must begin to seriously interrogate the governance structures at the county level so that if you are a, a CEO, then these prop you are sufficiently, you know, guarded and insulated from, you know, interference from either the governor himself, mm -hmm. the friends of the governor, the relatives of the governor, or the, the court points, as I said, so that you are able to confidently deliver service in the department and in the responsibilities that you've been given. All right. I want us to go to a different matter because I feel this is kind of uh, close to, to Monainchi. Uh, Philip, we're talking about 100 transition to secondary school. and It is believed the MCs are given about 20 million for that particular case and a few things for development. Has it worked? Is it working? And what has been the impact of these funds to the uh, locals? In the first case, I want to correct a myth that MCs have been given any money for such kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, is, that, that, that is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, uh, remember, uh, education is not devolved. Mm -hmm. Education is a national function. Mm -hmm. What is devolved is only uh, the ECDs mm -hmm. and, the, and uh, it's the ECD and maybe the polytechnics, the village polytechnics. Right. Every, everything else about education is a national government function. So 100% transition and how MCAs have been given money, 20 million to, 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 to do that, I do not know. It does not exist. Mm -hmm. That is a myth out there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, MCAs do not have any kitty that they manage. Okay. Do not have any funds within their own self mm -hmm. or within their own, uh, that, that they manage. The only thing that MCAs do is to help in when, during the budget making, in proposing uh, so it is wrong to say the MCS get 20 million every financial year for their wards because it is said they, they get 20 million of which tw around 12 million is used in education and 8 is used in development of which they give bursaries. That is a myth. That is a myth. What happens is, uh, maybe I may give an example of Embo County. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we kind of have an agreement with the governor mm -hmm. that... Uh, that 20 million could be a myth now that is emanating from what is happening in Embu County. Mm -hmm. That uh, we could have some 20 million as ward equalization. Mm -hmm. That every ward, before the governor does any other project, that every ward is guaranteed mm -hmm. 
of having some projects worth 20 million. Okay. Uh, you see that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Again, implementation is the governor and his departments. It is not the MCA. Mm -hmm. The MCA is only involved during the proposal of the projects, so during public participation, and during maybe during the budget making process. Maybe you can propose this one can go this one, this one can go here, this one can go there, uh, because within the 20 million, the governor can give you leeway now to propose the projects that you feel mm -hmm. that can be done within your wards. Mm -hmm. But it's not directly in the MCA's office. Okay. It's good to make people understand clearly. Mm -hmm. Because again, there has been a game mm -hmm. that has been played by several uh, governors mm -hmm. uh, so that they can intimidate MCAs, mm -hmm. so that they can make MCAs, you know, cow down and look like now uh, mm -hmm. sheepish. They will throw a propaganda down through their team, through their teams, mm -hmm. that MCAs are not working, they have this, they're not working. But again, at the end of the day, the buck stops at the governor. Right. Because the constitution does not allow anywhere uh, we do not have anywhere in the law that MCAs have, like CDF kind of what MPs have. Mm -hmm. That one is not available. But um, uh, I, I think uh, when it comes to bursaries, it is within that 20 million, maybe giving an example right. of Embo County, whereby an MCA may propose that out of these 20 million and out of the needs that I have for my award, mm -hmm. maybe 4 million can go to uh, bursaries. Yeah. Remember again, we are only complementing what the national government should be doing. Because uh, bursary, again, is a national government function. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that CDF is actually has only two functions left. That is education and security. But you see now, mm -hmm. the needs, education needs in the county are far much than what maybe the CDF can, can afford. Mm -hmm. And that is why several counties came up with a law that is helping them complement through bursaries what the national government is doing. All right. Yes. Now, for every idea, for every project that comes in, we will have a long hand that is in Kenya. We speak of corruption. Every project that's coming in, someone will have interest in that particular project. Now, uh, just as what do you feel about corruption? Because in your statements earlier on, you mentioned about corruption and the governors becoming everything. We have seen uh, one of them has been impeached by the Senate. Uh, we don't know who is next, but we, uh, we truly can see there is corruption in the counties. Is, are they, uh, is it the policies that are there, and is it something that we need to look into moving forward? As I said, and I wish to maybe re-emphasize once again, we need to re-evaluate the governance structure for the county. We need to insulate the officers, the men and women who are serving diligently at the county level, the chief officers, the directors, who are consistently and constantly bullied by, as I said, sometimes the governor himself or the friends of the governor, mm -hmm. to award tenders in the manner in which they prefer themselves. It, it is, you see, the, the, the governor may not sign any document, mm -hmm. but the amount of power and privilege he will surround mm -hmm. will then be able to either exercise power directly to influence some decision mm -hmm. in favor of his you know, preferences, and uh, you, you, as I said, you will see the fingerprints, the footprints of, 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 of the governor mm -hmm. in almost entirely the major tender, uh, tenders in the county. You, you, will, you, will, you don't need to be an intelligent man. To, 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 and when you talk to some of the officers, mm -hmm. and I'm sure I mean, you, know, you, you maybe have interacted with one or two people working at the county level, you can, without, you know, you know, going further, discover that the amount of intimidation, mm -hmm. the amount of uh, interference, the, the, the interest of the, of, of, of the men around the dining table mm -hmm. is so massive that every, if you go to a county, you will realize the staff, the one of the most unpopular people in the county, usually in some of the counties, is the governor himself. Why? Because either he is aware of the, the kind of power peddling being banded around or not, but mm -hmm. you will hear that most officers will tell you, when, once a tender has been given out, for example, or maybe they have advertised a tender, that is the time you will see the friends of the big men, you know, hovering around those offices, intimidating, and, 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 and of course demanding that they award a particular tender or service to a particular individual, and of course they'll always mention. And it's sometimes they mention, but sometimes it is true mm -hmm. that they have instructions. 
Okay. So to me, the biggest we need to insulate the officers, mm -hmm. and of course, and, and of course also to begin to, to give room to the governor himself to begin to, to sign some of these documents because mm -hmm. where the governor has a leeway to interfere is that he's able to transfer an officer and even to design him. I know of a, of an officer who was recently given a very strange designation mm -hmm. and uh, when he didn't play ball, he was given a very fine title and of course removed that he's <laughs> been given special duties. Um, so, so this is, this is one governor mm -hmm. has decided to, 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 to maybe, for example, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but when, I, when the officer mentioned, I, I realized that it is because I also know of a governor who shoveled and of course we gave marching orders to some officers mm -hmm. a day before they were meant to, to open a tender. Uh, six of them, mm -hmm. uh, because he wanted the right the right officers to sit in that board. Mm -hmm. And, and there's nothing you can do attacks. because the power almost allows the governor to. So the way the governor you know, plays around is the power to uh, reshuffle, mm -hmm. the power to even assign you, for example, today somebody wakes up and says, I've assigned you some special duties at the gate, for example, mm -hmm. today, or at the reception from here to the reception and then call it special duties, you know, what a drama. Mm. Uh, and, and, and therefore, to me, we need to reinvest again in the governance structure so that we, we, the, the officers manning the positions and the mandates they have been given mm -hmm. are able okay. to execute those mandates without looking right, left, at center. And of course, knowing that if I do not uh, play ball, play mm -hmm. along, I will be designated uh, an officer with special mm, duties special sitting duties. at the governor's uh, reception. <laughs> All right. Uh, Philip, time and again I've heard the governors cry out, we need more funds, we need more funds, and the national government has been saying, you have funds, show us what you have done with it, and uh, lest we are not doing this. Now, the funds that have been coming to the counties so far, have they have had any impact? And is there need to increase them, or we need to look into how now we can manage the funds that we get? Uh, thank you, Hilary. One good thing is that um, it is true, uh, money will never be enough. Uh, the issue is about the prudence in utilization of funds. I want to agree that we need more money in the counties than in the national government. Because if you notice, if you look at the constitution, that the services that were devolved are the most critical issues that touch on the common man. And I think that is where we need to pump more money more resources so that we can be able to, to, to engage and address the challenges that are affecting the common man at the grassroots. But I also want to say that the national government, I know you, you, you're quoting the president because at some point he told the governors, first show us what you're doing mm -hmm. with what you have. And I think the president in some way was right. If I buy from, uh, my brother here is talking like he's already working in a county, in a county executive, I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but the truth is uh, there's so much power that is being misused mm -hmm. by several governors. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say everyone. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with, uh, like what he said, that uh, the, the, the big man syndrome and whatever. I have no problem with somebody feeling big. But I have a problem with you feeling big, then not giving the right service to the person that you're serving. Mm -hmm. Let me f feel your weight mm -hmm. in terms of the service that I'm getting. If you want to, if you want to call me Honorable Nzangi, uh, Philip, if I really want to, to feel that being honorable is a good thing, let it be felt by the person that I'm serving that I really qualify to be called that person. Because being called again, or who else, we are all human beings. Uh, we cannot wait to go to heaven to be called honorable or everything else. Uh, <laughs> those things will happen here or not. Mm -hmm. But then let, it, let whatever we are doing reflect mm -hmm. the services, the, the, the titles and whatever names we get. Let them reflect the service we're giving. Hillary, we require more money in the counties. Mm -hmm. But truly, the governors must also shed the cartels that are working around them. Mm -hmm. You realize, like my brother said, that this money, wherever we are given more money by the national government, and the governors do not address the problems that are affecting mm -hmm. the, the, their in-house problems, they will never, because again, some governors still want more money to help their people get more money in their pockets, but the money does not reach the common person. Mm -hmm. Be because you realize decision-making, like he's saying, in most cases, is not from the county executive committee where the governor chairs.
you realize that decisions are made. You sit with a CEC member in most of the counties. I'm not the, in this case. I'm not talking about Embu County alone. Mm -hmm. You sit with a CEC member who who feels like the chief officer who is below him is more powerful. Mm -hmm. Because the chief officer is a closer friend to the governor. Right. And you see the chief officer is the accounting officer. officer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The governor may not have a lot of interest in the CEC who does not have powers on the money. Mm -hmm. He has powers on policy and everything else. He wants to be directly involved to put a friend where money yes. is, is being utilized. Okay. So that game, games can be played there. You look at some issues that are happening and I think the president was right to make that statement. Because you look at, look at the pending bills that are being paid by the counties. Mm -hmm. You may realize, Hillary, somebody got a job of, uh, worth 100 million last month mm -hmm. and has been paid. But somebody who worked for the same county government for a project worth 2 million or 3 million has not been paid. Mm -hmm. Reasons? Where we have 100 million, there is big returns and there's a possibility of uh, several other things. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Some kickbacks, like he called them. I don't know mm -hmm. why they are called kickbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, th these are the issues that we need to address. But again, we need to empower the county assemblies. Mm -hmm. And we have to solve these problems. I think the solution is not only in the county assembly, it's not only in the executive. Mm -hmm. We also need to manage our political system. Mm -hmm. You see, political parties have a way mm -hmm. of actually intimidating governors. Mm -hmm have a way of intimidating the county assemblies in such a way that sometimes these institutions are not able to work freely. Mm -hmm. What do I say? Look at, uh, let me use an example of a party like Jubilee, though I'm not Jubilee myself, I'm PNU. But Jubilee is the biggest party we have now in the country in terms of membership. Right. A decision will be made, be made by the party, persons that are not even elected in the county assemblies and will affect the operations of the members in the county assembly mm -hmm. with the fear of you might be thrown out of the party and the consequences will follow. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to revise mm -hmm. on the, the, the law managing our political parties because these political parties are also assisting mm -hmm. in corruption. A governor will be more respected in the party and a governor will want to intimidate members of county assembly from his party mm -hmm. so that they, they move with him. And what does he do? He will use the political party to intimidate members in the county assembly mm -hmm. so that they are not able to do their oversight role uh, mm -hmm. prudently. So there is a mix of issues that help governors go around mm -hmm. issues. And I don't want to say only governors. Even the president himself can easily misuse mm -hmm. the political party system mm -hmm. so that he can intimidate the members of parliament who are supposed to oversight him. So we also need, as we want to blame the governors, as we want to blame other leaders, we also need to look at our laws. What are the loopholes that they are creating for people to misuse? Right. So that again, we are able to solve the problems from where they are created, not from the person that is really exercising them. So yes, we need more money, mm -hmm. but still we have work to do to prudently spend what we have. Mm. Yes. All right. Just as I want you to respond to the same question as we wind up, we are running out of time. Yeah. Do the counties require more money? And do you feel the money, the, the funds that have been allocated to them so far have been impactful enough? I guess it is, it is a, a good thing to have more money. It, is, it would be the right thing again to devolve more resources, mm -hmm. as I said, because with the billions that is trickling down to the counties, again, we have not been able to, they have not been able to entirely solve the problems that are facing one inch. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that uh, even if we were to give them, even if the entire budget, the, the, three, the three, three trillion was to be devolved, I don't think it would be sufficient. So yes, we still need more money uh, at the grassroots, come out as one engine. Okay. Um, and, 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 I, and I think, as he said, and I'm sure I've said, then we need to enrich and and strengthen the, the structures of the county to ensure that these monies again mm -hmm. are utilized in a more prudential manner so that uh, the money do not belong to the to, to the county executive mm -hmm. do not belong to the governors mm -hmm. though some may want to behave in a manner to suggest it is their money it is the money that is on transition to manage mm -hmm. in terms of services in terms of uh, like he said bursaries so this is money it only they, 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 it, all, it can only get to manage through the offices that are relevant, either through education, either through uh, the, the national structure or the, or the county government structure. So yes, absolutely, it is very critical that we devote more resources mm -hmm. to the county level because then we'll be able to, you know, as he said, 
most of the challenges that are facing Wanenji, as, 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 as he said, need a lot of resources. Okay. And, and, and I'm sure the little resources that has been trickling down to the counties, the challenge again, as we have said, is it's not been used in a, in a manner that is envisaged mm -hmm. in law. And right. of course, the sealing of the loopholes so that no coin, no shilling is misused by anybody, either at the, at the upper echelons of power or at the middle or even at the lower, that everybody begin to appreciate that this is money that is meant for the poor man, the, the Mwanenji, the orphan, that sick mother, uh, elderly mother, elderly father, that disabled uh, child, that this money do not belong to us who are able in, 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 in so many aspects, but the money belong to the, 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 the needy. Mm -hmm. And of course the needy can be the, the, the youth. Uh -huh. Of course the youth uh, is categorized as a vulnerable group because they, they, they have the necessary uh, education, but usually they don't have the resources. They are rarely given jobs. Of course, the one tragedy the Devoli County again is the nepotism and, and, and of course the issue of chronism that the governor would want to give uh, positions, not to the young people, but to the friends that <laughs> he has worked with over time. And I'm sure that is, that is a challenge that cuts across. Mm, that you, sure. have a, 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 you have been given a governor and suddenly anybody you has ever been your friend, you've been in a school together uh, or you work together in Nairobi are all tripping down to the counties to be given positions mm -hmm. as, as a result of having what? You know, that the disease of... I France know you. <laughs> and I have known you for a very long time. So okay. any other position, you begin to see the, food, the, the, the footprints of French. Mm -hmm. You see the, the footprints of, of, of nepotism, that it is a relative. Oh. is the, the, the mother to the mother, the, the, the cousin to who. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and of course, if it is not addressed, nepotism and chronism is going to be the, the killer punch. Okay, and we of are, course, it is not. We are out of time. It's not a, a sober thing. We need to address, and I'm sure maybe next time we come, mm. the, the two issues, the two twin issues, the two tragic issues of nepotism and chronism should be addressed, okay. not a, as a matter of urgency. All right. All right. Many thanks for coming. Apparently, we are out of time. I would have loved us to continue. Uh, seems there is more that meets the eye. So uh, maybe sometimes later we will see into how maybe if the funds are allocated to the uh, counties as, as expected and has been requested. We will see if they have worked for us. Thank you so much back home for keeping us company. They have been my guest, uh, Philip, Honorable Philip, Member of County Assembly, uh, Makina Ward, Embu County, and Justice Minor. He's a governance and a policy analyst. Thank you so much. My name is Adereva Hillary. Good morning. Stay tuned. Valley's up next. <laughs>